Hello everyone and welcome back to a Terraria Muddy Masterclass video. In this episode we're going to be covering uh, creating a boss NPC as well as some custom AI elements and having the world uh, track whether we've already done the enemy or not. So without further ado I'm going to show you what the boss is. We're using Golem graphics just to save time. And we're going to be using a uh, summon item. So, a summon the boss. As you can see, the head appears on the map, and here he is. This boss has uh, three different things he does. Here, he just follows you. Then, he's stunned for a bit. Then, finally, he dashes like that. And also shoots projectiles. <laughs> and with that, the boss is defeated. We get uh, a treasure bag because we're in expert mode. I'll show you how to uh, also give items if you're not in expert mode, but let's right click as you can see. These are the items we're getting and we occasionally get a boss summon item. And I'll show you how we do that uh, in a second. So let's head back over to, uh, well let's head over to Visual Studio. Let's pause that. Close that. Okay. So I'll try and get the line numbers all visible. I hope that's the wrong one. No, that's fine. Okay. So there are five different classes that we're going to be uh, using. I'll go through each of them in a specific order. Uh, the boss projectile is just simple enough. I might not include that, but let's start with Team MC Boss. So, first thing you want to make sure you have is using Terraria, Terraria.modloader, Terraria.id, Microsoft.xna, and System. Please be aware that if you are creating from an uh, if you create your mod through Terraria, then there's a chance that you might end up with stuff like il.terraria or using something else.terraria. I don't remember what it is though. The first thing we can do is extend mod NPC. So you've got public class, TMMC boss, mod NPC. Then just above your class, you want to put this in square brackets, auto load boss head. This will make it so when you load the boss, it's searching for the head. And I'll show you the format for the head. This is the default boss graphic. As you can see, it matches the class name. And then we have an extension here for the head, which is the class name underscore head underscore boss. That will be the head that is given to the NPC. I'll cover these in a moment. First let's go to set static defaults. You can set your display name. Uh, like you normally do, set default and then the name. And then you can also set the number of frames this has. Uh, we have six frames in this NPC. You do n, uh, main dot NPC frame count of NPC dot type equals how many number of frames you have. In this case, six. Then override set defaults. You've got the NPC width and height, which is uh, the standard hitbox. We set NPC dot boss to true because this is a boss enemy. NPC.AI style equals minus one because we're not inheriting from any of the AI. 
NPC NPC slots, I believe is how many slots that the NPC takes up in the world. I think, might be wrong. Never fully remember what this does. NPC life max equals their max life damage and defense. Self explanatory. NPC knockback resist equals zero, so the boss is not affected by any knockback. How much uh money is dropped? So NPC value equals I am dot buy price of ten gold, so it'll be ten gold. NPC dot lava immune will not be damaged by lava. NPC dot no tile collide. So it doesn't collide with tiles, it's a bit obvious. And no gravity again. Just so uh NPC can move around freely and is not affected by gravity. NPC dot hit sound and death sound are also self explanatory. Music equals music ID dot boss two. This will play the uh, music for the boss. You can choose any music ID you want, and in the future I'll be showing you how to do custom music. And then finally, boss bag equals mod dot item type. And then the name of your uh, treasure bag, and we'll be covering that in a moment. So next you want to scale your stats to uh, expert mode. So what I do here is npc.lifemax equals, then we int npc.lifemax multiplied by boss life scale, and then npc.damage equals npc.damage multiplied by 1.3. So it will be 30% stronger. So you you can change this around, scale it however you want. This is just a standard, simple scaling. So let's now head over to uh, the AI. And I guess I should go over these private variables first. So what we have here is the AI incrementer, which is not been set yet. Uh, the attack timer, and then we've got the dash speed, which we've got fast speed, and then stunned and stun timer for when it's staying still. So let's go over into the AI. So public override void AI. What we're going to be doing is getting the player and the target vector. So we do npc.target closest, and we set that to true. Player. Player equals main dot player dot npc target, so we get in the current target player. Vector two target equals npc dot has player target. If so, then player dot center. Otherwise, main dot npc dot npc target dot center. This will get the center point for our target. So we're making sure our NPC doesn't rotate by going NPC dot rotation equals zero. Make sure that it always updates for uh, that and that set to true. And again, we set target closest to true. If you have an a uh, boss that heals itself, you want to do if NPC uh, dot life is greater than or equal to NPC dot life max. NPC dot life equals npc dot life max this will just make it so it doesn't go over their maximum life next we've got the handle despawning so we check if there is a npc target if player is dead or not active so we do npc target is less than zero which would be less than the possible targets npc dot target is equal equal to 255 which is the max size of the array targets if the player is dead or if player is not active so npc.target closest equals false so we don't set that npc.direction equals one or minus one whether you want to head left or right or whatever direction you want them to face npc.velocity.y equals npc.velocity.y minus 0.1f so this will make it so the npc is going to float upwards 
as they despawn. You can do plus if you want it to go down. Uh, it will go whichever way you decide. And finally, if npc .time, le time left is greater than 20, then we set that to 20 and then we, we return. Now we want to handle uh, if it's stunned. So we're setting the velocity to nothing. So if stunned, then we do npc.velocity.x equals zero, npc.velocity.y equals zero. Then we increment the stunned timer. Then we do if stun timer is greater than or equal to 100, we do stunned equals false. Change this value to whatever you want, by the way. And then we set stun timer equal to zero. So uh, we're no longer stunned. Well, the enemy is no longer stunned. And then we increment the AI. Now for some movement uh, stuff. If you don't know much trigonometry and geometry stuff, there's no need to worry too much. I'll be covering some simple stuff. So the first thing we're doing is npc.ai0 equals our float uh, equals float AI multiplied by 1f. So this is just going to turn it into a float variable. Uh, we, you don't really need this one f in, but just in case. Then we get the, dins, the, the distance between our target and the NPC center by doing int distance equals int vector to distance target NPC dot center. Now these are the three different states we have. So one change up to two. So if double mpc dot ai zero is less than three hundred, then we're doing frame equals zero. I'll cover frame uh, when I do the animation stuff. Then move towards. I'll cover this. This is a custom uh, uh, method that we've got for moving, which is npc target. Then we do the speed. So if distance is greater than three hundred. He will move faster, move at 13f, or we'll move at 7f. And then uh, 30 is the turn resistance. And then npc.net update equals true, so this will be an updated. If we are greater than or equal 300 or less than 450, then we enter in that stunned time, so stunned equals true. The frame is equal to 1, we're increasing our defense and lowering our damage. And then we've got this move towards, uh, so the NPC will still move but not as much despite the velocity being set to 0. And it does show it's very gradual, it's quite a nice effect. And then we're doing npc.net update equals true. Finally, do if the AI is above 450 or equal to 450, we're setting the frame equal to 2. Stunned is false, so make sure we're not stunned. npc.damage equals 40, so we're going back to the default. Uh, damage. You may want to do this now. I think about it because we're resetting the damage. Equals 40 times that. There we go. Then, if not fast speed, we're setting fast speed to true. Otherwise, we do if mc ai mod 50 equals zero so mod is a uh mathematical term where it's commonly used to tell if a number is odd or even if you do mod 2 uh mod 50 will make it so 0 50 100 150 all return zero then 1 
51 onwards will return 1, 52 onwards, uh, 2, 52 onwards will return 2. So it will return a value uh, between 0 and whatever you put in. Well, 0 and uh, whatever you put in, minus 1. And that will equal 0. This will happen every 50 AI ticks, I guess. The float speed equals 12. Then we've got a vector 2 vector equals new vector of npc.position plus npc.width times 0.5f npc.position plus npc.height times 0.5f which is getting a pretty much the npc.center uh, then we do float x equals player.position.x plus uh, float player.width divided by 2 minus this vector x and then we do the same thing with y changing player.width to height then float distance 2 equals uh, float math square root of x times x plus y times y this gets a distance between uh, two points and then float factor equals speed divided by distance 2. So this is the uh, speed factor that's been moved. So npc.velocity.x equals x multiplied by factor. npc.velocity.y equals y multiplied by factor. This will change the speed uh, dependent on distance. And our default speed is 12. So npc.now update equals true. That's the movement code. Next we have the up uh, the attack code. So if AI zero mod, then we're doing if expert mode 100, otherwise 150. So every 100, uh, it will shoot a projectile. Every 150, it will shoot a projectile. And if not stunned or in fast speed. And attack timer plus plus. If attack timer is less than or equal to two, then we do frame equal to two. npc dot velocity dot x equals zero f npc dot velocity dot y equals zero f. So this is like the stunned. Vector two shoot position equals npc dot center. So we start in that point. Accuracy equals 5f multiplied by mpc.life divided by mpc.life max. So uh, the accuracy is all dependent on how much damage you've done to the mpc. Uh, I'm not sure how well this has shown in the uh, battle, but if you play around with the numbers, it might make a difference. Then the vector to shoot velocity equals target minus shoot position plus a new vector 2 of main dot ran dot next float then we do minus accuracy and then by accuracy then main dot next float minus accuracy by accuracy they'll give a value between minus whatever accuracy is and whatever accuracy then we normalize the shoot velocity and then multiply it by 7.5 which I might actually increase. Then for in i equals i is less than, and then again we're doing that uh, expert mode thing. So if expert mode, shoot five, otherwise we'll shoot three. Projectile dot new projectile at shoot position dot x plus uh, minus one hundred multiplied by npc dot direction plus a random value between minus 40 and 41 so I'll return a value between minus 40 and 40 then shoot pods dot y minus a random value between minus 50 and 40 shoot velocity dot x shoot velocity dot y the projectile type the damage that's been done is npc dot damage divided by 3 and 
uh, 5F, I can't remember what it does in the uh, thing, but this is an AI option. And then if attack timer is greater than two, then we set the attack timer equal to zero. So this will make it slow. After a while, the NPC won't shoot any projectiles in the increment. It will instead reset it. And speaking of resetting, we're resetting the AI if our AI zero is greater than or equal to 650. We do AI equals zero. NPC dot alpha equals zero. If you are modifying the alpha, that's it. NPC dot AI two, we didn't end up using. So I'm actually going to remove that. And fast speed equals false. That's a reset. Let's have a look at the uh, move towards command. So, where is it? Here we go. Private void move towards, which takes in an NPC, a vector two player target, a float speed, and float turn resistance. So what we're doing is a bar move equals player target minus NPC dot center. So this will be a vector two. Then we get the length of the move. So float length equals move dot length. If length is greater than speed, move multiply by equals speed divided by length. Then move equals lost uh, mc dot velocity multiplied by the turn resistance plus move. Then we divide that by turn resistance plus one. Then we repeat this bit of code again. Uh, length equals move dot length. Length is greater than speed. Move multiplied by speed to find length. Then finally, mc dot velocity equals this move variable. That's everything for the uh, AI. Next, let's cover the uh, animation and frame. So you do public override void find frame takes in in frame height. Let's jump over to here. So private int frame, this is something we're setting in the AI, it'll just modify our uh, frames. And then private double counting, this is used as an incrementer. Then to uh, find frame, if frame zero, if frame is equal equal to zero, we do counting plus equals one. So if counting is less than eight, our npc dot frame dot y equals zero, so that'll be the top frame. Then we increment it by eight time. If less than sixteen, then frame dot y is equal to frame height. This is all set based on the number of frames you have in your uh, what you set in the set defaults. Then we do frame equals frame height times two so this would be the third frame then the fourth frame otherwise we reset it at zero go back to mpc.frame.y equals zero so that's just frame one in frame two we do else if frame equals equals one mpc.frame.y equals frame height multiplied by four because it is the fifth one uh, you do the frame height times four and then finally, we do else. This would be if it's equal to frame two. MC dot frame dot y equals frame height multiplied by five. So animation is pretty simple. If you know what you're doing. And then finally, we got uh, MC loot and boss loot. So we'll start with boss loot. Uh, here we're doing potion type equals item ID dot healing potion. So this is a potion that the NPC just the boss drops uh, by default. And then finally override NPC loot. We need TMMC NPCs world. This is your world class dot downed boss equals true. Now I'll cover this in a moment. And then if main dot expert mode, we do NPC dot drop boss bags. And that'll just drop the boss bag and you don't have to do anything else. Otherwise, we do item.newItem at 
npc.position x, npc.position y, npc.width, npc.height, doing item id, dot life crystal, and I've done the random value between 1 and 3. And then if main.van.next7 equals equal to 0, we do the same thing, but we're dropping the boss item and only one of them. So you can add as many items as you want. Uh, if you want to uh, check if others things down like if main dot hard mode you can drop an item like that so just scroll through make sure that's everything yep let's head over to the boss summon item so again you want to inherit mod item do the usual set uh static defaults set defaults uh the use style is or animation time is usually a lot higher at 45 and the max stack is usually 20 but that's not what we're here for we're here for these ones public override bull can use item and we return in if no npc dot any npcs mod npc dot type and then our boss uh, we do this to make sure that the boss doesn't already exist if it does then we can't use the item and finally Public uh, public override ball use item. We make a raw sound. I did main dot play sound sound id dot raw player position. If main dot net mode is not equal to one, so if uh, we're not on a multiplayer server, then we do mc dot spawn on player. Player dot who am I? So this gets the id of the uh, entity, and then the npc type. And then finally, we return true. Pretty simple. Let's head over to the treasure bag next. Again, inherit mod item. Uh, between the old tutorial and new tutorial, uh, this was implemented. You want to do public override in boss bag npc equals uh, equals get uh, mods dot npc type and uh, npc type. Uh, this is a gitter. If you some reason do not have uh if this doesn't work then you want to do public override in boss bag pc get the term mod dot npc type mmc boss this is a normal gitter and this and the one above is a c sharp six gitter i believe so yeah then with your set static defaults you can do right to open and it'll tell you what button to click from right clicking i believe uh here this is an expert mode item so we set item dot expert equals true then we do public override void open boss bag then we do player dot quick spawn item this makes it so the item spawns in the inventory instead of on the floor Getting 10 gold, we're getting greater healing potions between 5 and 10, greater mana potions between 3 and 7. And then uh, there's a 1 in 7 chance of getting a uh, boss item, and a 1 in 100 chance of getting another boss bag. Bag in a bag. Again, you can modify this however you want. You can also add conditions such as. Uh, Hard mode, uh, we well, already be in expert mode. Uh, you can even do biome if you so wish, which would be an interesting one. Let's head over to TMMC NPCs dot world or MC world today. So, like I said, this is your uh, mod world class, and we're going to be covering a few things. First, public static ball down to TMMC boss equals false. Uh, it's always false by default when you initialize them. We also set it false. Uh, then we got some saving and some net stuff. So, public override tag command save. We do var down equals a new list of strings, and then if we have downed it, then we add timmc boss to this list. Then we return a new tag compound. Uh, this isn't needed, this is optional. I've added version just 
So we have something if we change something in the future and it's important. And then downed uh, is the downs list. Then we do public override void loads so to get the tag compound or tag. We need bar downed equals tag dot get list string and we're getting the downed list. And then if this is down we do down tmmc boss equals if the list contains tmmc boss which if it doesn't it won't if you have uh down the boss then it will private override void load legacy we're getting the load version which is reading the in if load version equal equals zero then that's correct do bits byte flags equals reader dot read byte. So the best way to describe a bits byte is like so. It's basically a byte array of eight or one so it's kind of uh using binary to determine uh what it is so down tmmc boss equals flag zero so this will either be a zero or a one zero is equal to false one is equal to true public override void net send we do bits bytes flags equals a new bits bytes and then in that first flag uh, slot, we're going to do down to TMFC boss. This we again either be zero or one. And then we do writer dot write flags. Public override void net receive. Uh, we do pretty much the same as we did in load legacy. Bits bytes flags equals reader dot read byte down to TMFC boss equals flags zero. So that's. Uh, covering the whole world you want to also make sure that you've got all these using tags on here using uh, modloader.io and using system.io are important ones let's close these out and finally the projectile uh, this is a simple projectile it inherits from the bullet AI it doesn't collide with tiles it has a time left of 500 it ignores water not friendly uh, it's hostile we scaled it up and then we do a public override uh, AI and the velocity is increased by whatever we put into the AI uh, value okay so we're back I kind of made a small mistake in uh, the recording and I forgot to re-enable this source so what we're going to do is just show you the bus again and I'm going to go over uh, some of the stuff. I'm also going to open up, oh of course Blood Moon's Rising, why one not it? I'm going to bring open NPC info so you can see this. And I'm just going to enable this light hack just so we can see stuff a bit better. And now this boss is going to be a lot harder now that we've got this mode. But okay, let's summon the boss. We're on frame zero, which you can see is a bit faster now. And now he opens his mouth when he's charging. So he's shooting the projectile. And if we look at his thing, you can see the AI incrementing. Let's see when he's going to charge. There we go, he's about to charge. And no charge. Let's just beat the boss. And there we go. So again, we got our treasure bag. And we got our reward. So yeah, that's the uh, boss. I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, 
thank you everyone for watching. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. I have a very... A lot of my viewers I know for a fact are not subscribed to my channel. Like 90% plus are not subscribed to the channel despite watching the videos. So if you want to stay up to date, uh, be sure to subscribe. And like the video if it has been helpful. Until the next one, thank you for watching and goodbye.